Dwight Howard may be one of the biggest enigmas in league history, I would say. Began his career in Orlando. Uh, he was part of a very kind of eclectic team there that made it all the way to the Eastern Conference. Uh, actually, the finals. Stan Van Gundy style. Stan had a huge impact on that squad. For Charlotte Lewis actually made sense. Yeah, and... Uh, Hato Turkey. I guess, I, guess, I guess that was the beginning of the end. Uh, the way his, re his relationship with Stan Van Gundy, even publicly, that awkward hug that Stan walked out of. What would you say that kind of defined him early on in his career? This menacing, huge muscular force. I look at him kind of like that prom king or queen who just knows their shit and just kind of walks around with this inflated ego and no sense that kind of, uh, you know, make sure they're cleaning up other aspects of their life. Uh, you know, he had all the, all the ability in the world coming in at a high school, 6'11", 260, or he's a bit short than that, but anyways. But he just never really got past his ego and allowed himself to put in that work ethic beyond the weight room. We, we met Stan Van Gundy, I just thought of this now, we met Stan Van Gundy a year or two ago, and he told us a really interesting story about how he would coach Dwight in that whenever Dwight did something wrong in practice, he'd say, let's do it again, Dwight. Let's do it again, Dwight. Let's do it again, Dwight. It's kind of like how you talk about five. Well, he said it was the only way to get him to listen. They would just basically, in a way, peer pressure, but just the the need to get things done well and properly. And that's the way he had to deal with it. Obviously, he was forced out. And then Dwight just kind of started moving around the league. Yeah, no, he uh, kind of forced his way out, landed in L.A., which we thought at the time. They, they had landed, uh, obviously they had Kobe, they had landed Nash, and uh, still at Powell, so it was supposed to be this super team, and the injuries and internal conflicts kind of derailed that whole situation. And, you know, when Kobe doesn't want you there, it's usually a work ethic thing in my mind, or it's usually a basketball IQ. I had it as well. Um, I think that was pretty good from the start. Like I said, Idris Nash was never himself on that team. Such an ugly situation. They had that, uh, that billboard in LA. Yeah, D12. Uh, exactly. They just brought his talents to uh, Houston. And then, like, yeah, that awkwardness of, is he going to go to Houston, is he not? And then, you know, social media kept catching fire. I mean, and one, one of the things that, as well, in terms of his game, you know, he's always ragged on for his free throw shot. Well, and for... Uh, for a prominent player to have such a low efficiency post game, so you're shooting under 40 percent in, in the uh, restricted area, then in the playoffs, and as your only real low post scorer, you know it's fine when DeAndre Jordan does that because you have Blake Griffin to score inside. Right. But when you're being paid max dollars, you need some more offense out of that, and he even worked with, with the team. Yeah, I was going to say that with Hakeem Olajuwon at your disposal, and your coach is Kevin McHale. I think, yeah, exactly. On a day to day basis. So, how do you not pick up a few offenses? To, like, to have two of the best local players in history, it really gives you a little excuse. Um, yeah. Well, because you kind of had to pick one, right? Because if you're that guy who's never going to pick up a jump shot or a hook, he kind of tries to do that, but at least hit your free throws, right? Because if you're that guy that can just attack the rim and get hit, well, you just spend your life in the charity strike and you make up your points there. But he didn't. Well, I mean, one series that, that stood out to me, uh, maybe in a way of defining. I guess role in his life was last year against Portland when they they lost to Damian Lillard at that buzzer beater. I think in Game Six or Seven, he had an amazing, immaculate series there, but it just didn't work out. It seems like sometimes he shows up, sometimes he kind of shows up. Like the biggest thing for me is when it doesn't go his way, like we saw in the last series with his uh, karate chop there. There's, yeah. there's way too many karate kid references for this one series. Yeah. But um, the one karate chop to Andre Iguodala was going through a screen, like he almost broke his collarbone there. He looks like one of those guys that when things are not going his way, he kind of throws a bit of a temper tantrum. He yeah, doesn't yeah. seem to have that demeanor. And I think it was very telling, because going back to the Kobe bit, when you don't have that IQ, he seems like one of those guys that really has a, like the raw potential, but would you put him more like a Mark Gasol or Javali McGee mentally, right? And and you start wondering, and because when a guy, if you're that smart, you know your opportunities, and you have this many, you know, coaches and assistants and personal trainers, how do you not get better? It just it's this weird middle ground, and I think Dwight Howard's forever going to be known as a bit of a wasted talent. 